As we start to build more complex grid layouts, it becomes important to know how grid interacts with other layout methods, such as absolute positioning. Here's a quick demo. I've got some items and they're laid out on a grid. If I took the fourth item and set that to position absolute, you can see it immediately stops behaving like a grid item. That's because it's taken out of flow just as we'd expect with an absolute positioned element. And we can push it around using the offset values just like any other absolutely positioned item. However, areas on the grid can also become positioning contexts. So inside my third item here, which is the, the larger block, I'm going to add another item. So you can see that now appears inside the item in line because we haven't given it any positioning yet. So our third item needs to have position relative in order that it can be a positioning context for whatever's inside it. And we can then absolute position the child. And again, we can push that around using the offsets. and it will behave just as you'd expect. I think this is fairly logical behavior. Just as a little extra note on this, grid lines are indexed starting from one, with line one being the left-hand line in left to right languages. So line one is here, and here's line two, line three, and line four is on the end. You could also target that with minus one, the final line on the grid. If we switch our direction, so I could use direction RTL. And you can see now that line one, which is where this item starts, is now the far right side of the grid. But absolute positioning offsets are physical. They're from top and left and bottom and right. And so they don't change with the direction or writing mode. So my top left values have stayed the same, even though the writing mode has changed.